This time on IFAF. I know, Falls and French. Toast. Breakfast. With ice cream. I want buns of steel, <laughs> but I also want buns of cinnamon. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe she won't slaughter you during the robot uprising now. Maybe. There's plenty of plain vanilla shows to go lick if you want to. Yeah. This ain't it. <laughs> oh, come on. Everyone does that. Everyone does that? Yeah. IFAF, Idaho Falls infotainment talk show with Mike Nelson and Carly Morgan. Coming up on this episode, Weeby Toys is moving. A video game featuring the Idaho Falls Temple will pay homage to the North Highway Cafe. Something cool coming up from Reed's Dairy. Why it's okay for uh, teenage kids to do cookies mm -hmm. in the mall parking lot. Oh, and a City of Idaho Falls utility scam that you need to know about. Episode 29, released on January 29th. I know, how cool is that? This is like our golden birthday. Right, right. You ever been to a golden birthday party? Well, certainly, you, I know you had yours a few years ago. Yeah, yeah, mine wasn't all that exciting. I didn't really do anything extra special. I went to one once, mm -hmm. and it was like, wee, golden birthday, but <laughs> we didn't really do anything special or noteworthy, yeah. or there wasn't any extra sauce. Yeah. yeah, I didn't really think to do anything all that special. Yeah. You know, I didn't really... I didn't really recognize that it was my golden birthday. So I was like, oh, whatever. It's just another birthday. For the kids, golden birthday is when you turn uh, the age that your birth date is on. Mm -hmm. So like if your birthday is January 25th and you turn 25, that's your golden birthday. Right. And this will be the only time that we have a episode released on the same date, right? Because I mean- Right. Because our 30th not gonna happen will be with, out. Yeah, yeah. 30 or 31. Right. And then we're done. Yeah. Right. So Bummer. yeah, your golden birthday has to happen before you're 31. Uh-huh. Speaking of birthdays, <laughs> we're recording this on Carly's birthday. Yeah, which is super exciting. Mostly because I just wanted to, you know, have you all to myself this weekend. Right. Yeah. We, we bumped it a day Mm -hmm. forward so that uh yeah we can hang out all weekend long yeah which yeah. i think will be really fun Ooh, what are, what golden birthday stuff are we gonna do tune in next week <laughs> to find out what we did probably just went we golden birthday <laughs> right yeah <laughs> but yeah i think that'll be really fun too i'm trying to think of some extra sauce extra what, sauce, whatever's yeah. there there's got to be some extra sauce somewhere yeah there's got to be right yeah we'll figure it out yeah okay you know what's funny so this is our 29th episode being released on the 29th, and I'm also turning 29. Mm, mm, mm. That's right. Yeah. So I think that's just a sign of good luck. We should. Do we have a numerologist around? <laughs> what does 329s mean? Right. I think that's good news. I have to assume it is. Well, happy birthday. Thank you. We're going to go have a nice homemade birthday dinner after. I can't believe you didn't want to go out. You wanted something uh, at home. Well, I mean, I've been working all day, plus we have the podcast, because, you know, ain't no rest for the wicked. Right. But yeah, I love having a nice little at-home birthday party with the people I actually like. I've done some fantastic <laughs> prep work. I'm very excited well, to, good. I'm to excited. present the chef's selection for this evening. Oh my gosh, I can't wait. Featuring Virgin Riverland and Cattle Company Steaks. Mm -hmm, which I'm so excited for. Thanks, Whitney and Lane. Mm -hmm. By the way, they have invited us to uh, Spud King's Hockey Game. Which will be my first hockey game, and I think yours too. Do Is it just me, or do hockey rinks have, or skating rinks have, a distinct smell? It's almost like cold chlorine. Yeah. Yeah. One follow-up. I want to give mad props to Brian Wood from Wood Funeral Home. Mm -hmm. Holy cow. He caught what is my worst nightmare, mm -hmm. a typo that I made. In the title, too. In the title. In fact, the very first word. Mm-hmm. Maverick, the convenience store that purchased Come and Go, which <laughs> we made fun of for changing the spelling of that word. Uh-huh. They don't spell it Maverick like the uh, unbranded cattle or, or, or like the um, Top Gun fighter pilot. <laughs> they spell it without the C. Yeah, which I don't know how I feel about that. I don't know... If I noticed it at the very beginning, and then, because I've lived in Maverick country since the 80s. Right. Since they took down Circle K. <laughs> but um, uh, I don't know if I did notice it and then forgot or just never noticed it. Never thought about it ever. Mm -hmm. And Brian actually said, yeah, not a lot of people catch that. Right. And by the way, I, so I took one of those tests once, one of those INFJ, not the Briggs-Myers personality test. Yeah. The one I took was called the DISC test. Yes. I don't know mm -hmm. if you've taken this, but. I have. 
Like, uh, and I was an IDC as in, I don't care. <laughs> huh. That was my joke, but I do care. Uh, I'm a high C mm-hmm. meaning I, uh, so D is like, I don't know, dominant. I is influencer. S is like, I don't know, just your normal person. And then C like cares about correctness. Mm-hmm. And I, and so I'm an IDC all above the line and my S is below the line, whatever oh, that weird. means. And so being a high C ha- mm-hmm. or having a high C in my personality profile, wanting to be correct, I was just devastated when Brian pointed that out. <laughs> and, right. But, but thank you, Brian. Mm-hmm. And uh, he actually made a game of it. He's like, and I saw it come across my phone. He's like, okay, I'm going to give you guys 10 minutes. And if you can figure out your typo in the, you can see the whole thread under the last episode, episode 28. On Facebook, right? On Facebook is where this was. Right. We'd love it if you give us a like. Um, but <laughs> he said, can you guess what word you misspelled? And I'm looking, I'm going, in fact, I even ran it through spell check. Mm. Aha. Uh, that was, that, a, you know, mm-hmm. that wouldn't have caught it. No. Anyway. If anything, it would have said that it was incorrect had it been correct. Brian owns Wood Funeral yeah. Home. Mm-hmm. And uh, I had, um, I would say, unfortunate experience of having several people in a, in a family very close to me pass away, mm-hmm. like five people in five years or something ridiculous. Right. And they always went to Wood Funeral Home. Mm-hmm. Well, Brian was standing there one day, and I can't remember what I said, but it was probably an irreverent joke. <laughs> and here's my impression of Brian. He was standing there like a funeral director does. Mm-hmm. And he went... And then went back to normal. That's just, perfect. Just a little smile and chuckle, uh-huh. silent chuckle, because I think we were like at the wake. Ooh. <laughs> you know? Yeah. I mean, well, you've got to be respectful, but also, right. can we talk about funerals for a minute? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I want my funeral, just to, just toss my body in a dumpster. I don't care what you do with my <laughs> body. But I want my funeral to be either like, uh, okay, there was a member of Monty Python that passed away, Graham Chapman. Mm-hmm. And... The other members of Monty Python got up and just made everybody laugh. Oh, that's nice. It was cathartic. Mm -hmm. It was probably healing. It was just amazing to celebrate. Let's Mm -hmm. celebrate the life. Right, right. Like, okay, a New Orleans funeral. They, uh, you know, uh, oh, wait, that's the Empire Strikes Back. (laughs) It's Darth Vader's march. But um, the yeah, the funeral march. Yeah. Yeah. But then, at some point, and I don't know how they know when, but at some point, when the pallbearers are uh, carrying the body down the uh, French Quarter in New Orleans, you hear this, <laughs> and they start playing when the saints go marching in. Oh. And they celebrate. It gets mm-hmm. rowdy. Yeah, I have heard that before. That's how I want my funeral to be. Probably not a lot of East Idaho funerals mm-hmm. are like that. Probably not. So Brian does a he's very professional, does a great job. Wood mm-hmm. Funeral Home does a fantastic job. And he's a cool dude with a sense of humor. Right, right. Who knew a mortician could have a sense of humor? Right. You know, that's I wonder said. who could beat each other in a in a contest of gallows humor, Brian. You or I. Oh, that's a good that's a good one, honestly. Um, now that being said, a couple of fun facts. So first off, my family also tends to use Woods Funeral Home when we need when we need to have a funeral, which thankfully hasn't been too often, but you know. There's some people queued up to kick the bucket. <laughs> God, I hope not. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. <laughs> but also, I heard once, and I don't know entirely how true this is, but it wouldn't surprise me, that at one point Angelina Jolie wanted to be a funeral director. Oh, that just makes all the sense in the world. Right? I'm sorry, but can you imagine Angelina Jolie as your funeral director, just those chiseled jawbones, you know? And first off, you're supposed to like, I don't know, (laughs) not stare at her the whole time. Like, she's supposed to be a very much like a background character in that. She'd make a great Morticia Adams. She would make a great Morticia Adams. I know that ship has sailed, but. So the whole time you'd be staring at her when she's supposed to be a background person. Mm -hmm. And then also like. I would worry about like I don't know husbands hitting on her or something like it just seems <laughs> at a <too>, funeral. <laughs> uh, I've seen some really. I mean, I've seen some bad behavior at funerals oh, and my. weddings. Weddings, you've got all the bridesmaids <laughs> checking out the groomsmen, right? Right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Love is in the air at a wedding. That's right. true. That's yeah. true. But um, at a funeral, I think hitting on somebody would just be acting out. 
you know, like I got, out of grief. I'm not even kidding. I got hit on a, at a funeral once. Wow. Okay, yeah. so you have seen it firsthand. Yes, firsthand. Wow. The weird thing was, it was from a number I didn't know, but they were like, hey, you looked really beautiful at the funeral today. I'd love oh. to take you out sometime. Oh, so after, at least they waited till after. There's a little I decorum think, there. I actually think that I got it while I was at the funeral still. Oh. And I was like... Who's texting me this? What is going on? Well, I mean, you you do try to present yourself, look the best at a funeral. Oh, yeah. You wear your Sunday best. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but I just thought it was super weird. But still, it's not a meat market. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It just, it really rubbed me. And well, and it was for someone I was really close to, too. And the whole time I was like sad and crying, like, I don't want to hear this right now. Leave me alone. Yeah. Timing is, uh, timing is key, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Jeez, Louise. Anyway, Brian also owns the Brickyard Event Center. So one mm -hmm. day, if we get big enough, I've already talked to him about this, and, and he's amenable to the idea. Nice. Um, if we ever get big enough to do an IFAF Live, Brickyard. I love that. That's, the, uh, that's where I attended the wedding. Did we talk about this last week? Mayor Rebecca Casper was a really good friend of a family. And uh, she officiated the wedding and I DJed it. Yes, that's right. If, so I was asked to DJ a wedding uh -huh. and I was like, I said no three times. And then I finally caved. Right. Because there's a big difference between uh, former, you know, radio personality or broadcast personality mm -hmm. and a mobile DJ. Yeah. Yeah, huge difference. Right. <laughs> well, and to be fair, I think you did fall more into the MC category with that, but yeah. Yes, that's yeah. yeah. Once they explain, no, it's it's mostly just yeah, you'll hit the play button, but mostly just welcome people in, tell right. them to have a seat. It's going to start in five minutes. Mm -hmm. That kind of thing. Yeah, it really wasn't too bad. You know, my idea of how I want my funeral to be is the exact opposite of yours. Really? If at least one person doesn't throw themselves on my body <laughs> as I'm about to be uh, cremated, I've done something wrong. I want there to be just cries and wailing in the streets when I die. I want people to be just, just devastated by my passing. What about one uh, lone gentleman wearing mm. all black with an umbrella? Mm. Like, oh, yeah. A hundred feet away. <laughs> oh, yeah. I got Watching have, in the distance. Yes. I yeah. definitely need to have a suspicious spectator as well. Yeah. Yes. I would like that very much. Make people wonder, you know. <laughs> Tall, dark, handsome, sunken cheekbones. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Just, yeah. just all sorts of mystery surrounding them. I like that idea. I like right. that idea a lot. <laughs> but mostly I just want people to be like, the world is a worse place now that she's gone. What mm. will we ever do? Well, I mean, since she's gone, let's go ahead and descend into chaos. Yeah. That's what I want. I want the entire world to collapse. You could herald. Death. Yeah. The uh, <laughs> the apocalypse. Yeah. You're you could be the one, the chosen one. That would be my goal and my hope. And not even know it. <laughs> Especially because I don't want to live through the apocalypse. So right. realistically, if it could happen once I die or Ideally, because of my death, that would be better. You might be manifesting this right now, Carl. I could. You might, you might be. The universe might be <laughs> rearranging itself right now to accommodate. Okay, I don't your actually request. want the apocalypse <laughs> to be triggered by my death, only because I'll probably die I before care, you. I so. care about people. I, you know, sure. Yeah. Well, yeah, but I still care about younger people than us. Right. Oh, you do? <laughs> yeah, I've got a niece and nephew to worry about. Right. Yeah. But anyway, point is, I want people to weep and just be completely devastated by me being gone. And point is, mm -hmm. uh, Maverick is spelled, the convenience store is spelled without the C. <laughs> like like you were wondering, how come they can't just spell things normally? I, I gave it some thought. Oh, mm -hmm. and Brian, I just so you know, I did uh, email customer service. <laughs> we'll see if we get a response back. Mm -hmm. I'm betting that... Like, I'm not sure you can say trademark the phrase come and go, mm -hmm. but if you spell it differently, then it's proprietary, then you can trademark it or what. I think that's the reasoning behind it. You know, it's kind of funny that we're talking about death on a birthday um, because earlier today, my mom called me and I was at work, so I denied it. And then she called me again and I was like, okay, something's wrong. And she's like, hey, I'm so glad you picked up. I thought you were dead. <laughs> What? And I'm like, yeah, okay, so Did you I, have one of those mother premonitions or something? No, so basically, um, I got all of my, like, happy birthday texts and stuff earlier today, mm -hmm. and I've been really busy at work and also with the podcast mm -hmm. and, like, just driving around and stuff. I haven't had a chance to answer any of them, and so they're piling up in my phone and actually, like, causing a little anxiety, but that's fine. <laughs> it is. It's a duty, isn't it? When, it is. Uh, and have you checked your Facebook? Oh, no, I can't Because, you know, even. when you see that flood, it's like, ugh. Right. So people have started just... 
the day after mm-hmm. saying, hey, thanks, I feel so loved. Right. But I still go through and either like or love every single one of them. Yeah, I'll, I'll usually like all of them unless they're like really a... weird or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, unless it's like hitting on you at a funeral. Yeah, unless it's that. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, uh, she basically was like, yeah, uh, Granny said that you hadn't answered her text yet. And I was just getting worried about you because you hadn't answered mine and no one had heard from you. And I was like, yeah, I'm just working. It's okay. Great. I'm glad yeah. you're safe. Yeah. <laughs> How about this January thaw we've been having? Right. It's been crazy. Ranko is so happy to have some grass back. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that poor guy. I, I actually walked him a little bit today and mm-hmm. I, without knowing, without meaning to, I think I dragged him through a, a drift that was <laughs> oh, about no. as tall as he was. Yeah. You know, yeah. It, so many of them are. Yeah. Or even above his head. It was definitely hitting his dangly bits. Right. Right. Didn't think of that. Sorry, buddy. <laughs> But uh, we, yeah, we've had a few 40 degree days in a row and it looks like a few more coming with just some mm-hmm. light snow here and there. Right. Now we knew we were going to have an El Nino. Maybe that's what this is. Mm-hmm. I would just call it a warm winter Zephyr. Yeah. Ooh, Zephyr. That's a good word. Yeah. It just, um, you know, when you, and, and I'll tell you, it'll turn on you in a second. Oh yeah. Go outside. Suck your finger, hold it up in the air like you see them do. And usually the cold side will be from the Southwest. That's where Mm -hmm. we get our weather. Mm -hmm. Um, And I don't know if that's where this is coming from, but I do know whenever it's bone chillingly cold, you can go and do the same exercise and the wind will be coming from the North. Right. That North wind Mm -hmm. when it meets the sea. That's frozen too. But um, (laughs) yeah, enjoy it while it lasts because we all know what's coming. I hope so, anyway. Mm-hmm. We need that snowpack for the farmers. I feel like, in general, if it gets really bad one more time before before spring, then usually it means that we are going to have spring sooner. It's yeah. almost like it dumps it, you know? Last spring, I swear, it there was still snow on the ground when I saw buds on the trees. Right. And I was like, we went from winter to, like, June is busting out all over. It was wild. Yeah. What do you got there? Oh. And where'd you get them? So I picked these up at the Grocery Outlet Bargain Market. Um, the, which that's I, the one on Hit, right? Not the one on Woodruff? Is that? The one on Hit, yeah. The one on Hit. Yeah. Isn't that big deal outlet that's on Woodruff? Yes. Okay. Yeah. And and yeah. so this grocery outlet, is that's the one that's in the old Porter's building. Yeah, right outside of okay. Joanne's. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, I thought it was funny when I saw them because they reminded me of when we go to World Market down in Salt Lake. Yeah. And they had some up here and they had some really fun flavors. Like they had a juicy pear and an orange sherbet this time that I just had to get because they sounded so good. Which one do you want to try? I have a feeling I'm going to- Or end with. Okay. (laughs) I think I am going to like the pear one better. Okay. So I want to start with the orange sherbet. Right. That's That seems to be the routine. I think that's pretty yeah, good. I think so. So, yeah, at Christmas time, when we got them from World Market, uh, yeah, that's um, nice. we, <laughs> we got cherry and chocolate, and mm-hmm. now we're having orange dream and pear. Now, before you try it, which one do you think you're going to like better? I don't know. Probably the orange dream. Okay. Yeah. I like it. Let's All see right. if I can taste uh, some hair and on this pear. In case we didn't say anything, or in case we didn't say what they are, they're the Jelly Belly Sparkling Waters. We've had them before and they're super good. Give them a try. Yeah, the last ones were great. I I wish mm. I could drink this stuff all day instead Ooh. of LaCroix. This tastes La just like this tastes just like those polar ones that we get. The orange cream ones. Oh yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's really good. Those are one of my favorites, personally. You can. You can taste the hair on the pear. Ooh, I love that. Like those mango gummies you got me for Christmas? Yes. It's like you can taste the hair on it. That sounds gross, but <laughs> it just it's a real legit flavor is what I'm what I mean by that. Well, and I love the Jelly Belly pear jelly beans. They're like my favorite jelly bean. Really? I'm not... Oh, they're so good. Either that or the Tutti Fruities because they're cute and pink, <laughs> which helps. I'm not a huge fan of pear, mm-hmm. but yeah, it's okay. Oh. When, whenever I have one, it's, you know who, have you ever had a um, Harry and David pear? I have actually, and Those they're so amazing. good. I actually really love pears. When I was a kid, I would almost exclusively eat pears out of the can as a snack like every day. Wow. Yeah, I love pear. Oh, yeah. Mm. Definitely the orange sherbet for me. Oh, yeah. I like the pear better. Do you so like... That's perfect. <laughs> do you say sherbet or sherbet? I say sherbet. Yeah, me too. Yeah, I like the R in it. You know, both are correct. Yeah. And it's not even like a regional dialect thing. It's not a UK versus US thing. Mm-hmm. Just both are correct. Yeah. Yeah. 
which I mean is nice, but also I just think Sherbert sounds better, but I don't like that it's not spelled that way. Right. I think that's the only thing that bothers me. Hmm. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hit this again. Yeah, do it. But it's just so nice to be able to just go somewhere locally and get some random stuff like that. And that's actually why I like to go to the grocery outlet because they always have weird stuff in there. Yeah, they have like discontinued products that you've never heard of before. Right, right. For example, Craft mm-hmm. for a hot minute made um Craft mac and cheese flavor packets. Yes, and they were so good. The pizza one was great. Oh, there was, was a barbecue one, there was mm-hmm. a ranch, a buffalo one. Okay, that maybe mm-hmm. that's what I meant. Buffalo, yeah. not barbecue. Yeah. You're good. It's fine. The other thing that I bought on this uh, shopping trip was uh-huh. some pickled quail eggs. Why? Or canned pa- pa- quail eggs, I guess. Were they in a like a cocktail jar? Would you put them in a Bloody Mary on a Sunday? I would totally put them in a Bloody Mary on a Sunday, <laughs> but they were not in a cocktail jar. They were in a regular old can. Huh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. They were crazy, but they were really good. Yeah. I'm not a huge fan of, I don't know, thrift store shopping. Well, that's not true. I, mm-hmm. I go two or three times a year mainly looking for Idaho t-shirts. Right. Right. Um, I just love t-shirts mm-hmm. with Idaho on them. Right. By the way, the Teton t-shirt this week is... I heart IF. Mm-hmm. It looks like the I heart NY shirt. Yeah, nice and classic. Teton t shirts.com. But, um, but I love, I do love our trips to the uh, grocery outlet and the big deal outlet. <laughs> right. Just because, and here's the thing it's, I actually did compare prices on a couple of things and they're not necessarily cheaper. Mm-hmm. Sometimes they are, but not necessarily. But they're weirder. They've got weirder stuff that you can't find in your normal store. Interesting stuff. Yeah. And so I like to go there and just pick up random stuff and then make a meal out of it. (laughs) Speaking of weird foods, Mm -hmm. I was, I have failed you in one regard. Oh, really? Carly, and I apologize in advance. I couldn't find the Ben and Jerry's. um, Oh, man. The ice cream. Candy heart ice cream. Yeah. I'm so bummed about that because I haven't been able to find it either. Yeah. And I don't know where to even look for it now. Speaking of ice cream. Mm-hmm. Oh, man, it's been so cool to see the outpouring of community support for Reed's Dairy. It really has. Alan I mean, Reed himself posted a video thanking everybody. And- mm-hmm. Well, and like you were saying, Reed's Dairy is an Idaho Falls in- institution. Yeah. You know, they've been here for forever, it feels like. And they've always been the best. And, and they've really gotten creative. Like we've talked about a few mm-hmm. episodes ago, they do those seasonal milk flavors now. Right. Banana and strawberry. And their chocolate nugget Christmas is mm-hmm. always amazing. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I guess they, they've been able to, I, I think, outsource some of their operations to other facilities here in East Idaho who are helping them. Oh, good. Until they can get back on their feet. So that's just great. Mm-hmm. Well, and I love seeing just random people on Facebook, like under the Life in Idaho Falls tag saying, hey, Reed's Dairy, how can we help you? Like, what do you need? Like, right. how much, like, what's insurance not covering and stuff like that? Like, people don't just want to support them by buying their stuff. They want to do anything they can to support them. It's really cool to see a business with that has a product that people are so passionate about mm-hmm. that when they suffer something like this, the whole community's behind them. Hey, what can we do? How can we help? Right. Here's a way you can help. They're having a French toast special for National Ice Cream for Breakfast Day. Ooh, yum. Which is Saturday, February 3rd. <gasps> Ooh, that sounds fun. Can we go? There. Yeah, I saw this. Check this out. <laughs> Here's the flyer at their East Side location, mm. uh, which is like right there with a Jiffy Lube and a gas station. Honestly, that's one of the reasons why that's one of my favorite gas stations to go to because uh-huh. it always smells so good. I imagine the Reed's Dairy kids get olfactory fatigue. Mm-hmm. You know what that is? Oh, yeah. That's yeah. Like when you, you go nose blind. A, yeah. When you go work on a farm, mm-hmm. pretty soon you can't smell the farm smell mm-hmm. because you just, yeah, you get nose. I think nose blind is a perfect way. Yeah. To say that, special hours, 8 to 11 a.m., you get two slices of French toast topped with a scoop of ice cream, maple-flavored syrup, Ooh. and Reed's Dairy milk to drink. Ooh, I love that. That's so good. So if that sounds good and you want to support Reed's Dairy, that's how. I love that. I'm reminded of the meme, I want buns of steel, <laughs> but I also want buns of cinnamon. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I think that's pretty accurate. <laughs> 
I want this breakfast. <laughs> mm-hmm. And also on the note of Reed's Dairy, I found that video of Rango giving the piggy a oh, kiss. Yes. So let's go ahead and insert that here. Let's okay, check it out. And okay, it's not a full lick, but that's definitely a nose bump. It's a nose bump. Yeah. And the crummy thing is, so he did give the piggy a kiss, but I have no evidence of it because I took my phone out a second too late. Oh. And then all I got was the nose bump. Like a UFO sighting. Right, right. I know. <laughs> Maybe he licked it because it smelled like bacon. Tasted like bacon. That could be. I, I wouldn't put it past him. Bacon tastes good. <laughs> well, and Pork he, chops taste good. And he does love bacon. Yeah. And as a matter of fact, right now, his favorite chew toy is a piggy. Yeah, yeah, I'm looking right at it. But I just love that they provide that little petting zoo to their patrons and also the people who just happen to live around there and want to walk their dogs there. I think that's a really cool little bonus that they didn't have to do, but they did it because they're the best. So, Reed's Dairy, you are IFAF this week. Crisp high five, 21 finger gun salute, and a chef's kiss to To you you. and your ice cream. Mm -hmm. No notes, no cap, no kidding. Ooh, and their, che- their grilled cheese and tomato soup, too. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. And their cheese curds. Mm-hmm. All their good dairy products. <laughs> All your dairy. <laughs> I feel like we have an interesting show today because it's just a bunch, a ton of short things. Yeah. Like, you know, less than five minutes each, including Weeby Toys moving to 545 Yellowstone, which is just across B Street from the original. Mm-hmm. So you look for the Weeby Purple. Oh, cool. Which looks like purple. Yes, it, it's very purple. I don't know about you, but I like colors that end in purple. <laughs> we haven't driven by it, but mm-hmm. Weeby Toys, if the store looks empty when you go, it's around there somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> right. Just turn around. You'll see it. I do love that we have a brick and mortar toy store. Me too. In Idaho Falls. Well, and I love their window display, especially yeah. the one with the big Ferris wheel in it. It's just so cool and whimsical and just fun. Really? You walk in there. When When's the last time you were in a toy store? You will feel yeah. like a kid in a toy store. Right. It's just there's so much eye candy mm-hmm. and you're sure to find something there. Well, and toys have gotten kind of cooler. Yes. At oh, least yeah. some of them have. I will say I'm very upset that they don't have the Polly Pockets that they did when I was a kid because they were the best. Those are due for a comeback, aren't yeah. they? Yeah. Oh, those little rubber clothes. The 25-year cycle. Yeah. 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 Totally. And they were so Y2K, Uh which is super duper in right now anyway. (laughs) Yeah. You know, Uh, I would love to see him again. I actually pulled out my old Polly Pockets a while ago and played with them with my niece and she was obsessed with them. (laughs) And so I think that I need a, I think they need to bring them back so that I can buy some for my niece so that she doesn't have to play with mine and lose all the little bits to them. Yeah, right. Are you a little possessive? I was very careful with my Polly Pockets. And if I ever have a daughter, I'd want her to have them. But you're such a cool aunt. I am a cool aunt. That's true. We rarely get political on this show, Mm -hmm. but I want to show you this bumper sticker. I was behind this car uh, at the McDonald's drive-thru of all places. Well, and here's the thing. I wouldn't even say it's political because we're just commenting on the fact that it is a, an objectively funny sticker. And that's regardless of whose name is at the bottom. Exactly. Yeah. Thank you for saying that. So here's the sticker. We'll read it to you if you're listening. It says, in pretty big letters across the back windshield, Mm -hmm. I would trust Casey Anthony to watch my kids before trusting Biden. Which does make me kind of wonder if you love your kids. (laughs) Just saying. (laughs) Now, look, it could say Trump at the end. I don't, again, it could be anybody's name. But the fact that somebody went through the process of having the thought, Mm -hmm. validating the thought, getting the stickers done, and adhering them to their vehicle. Mm -hmm. Like that's, you know, let's go, Brandon, is... I mean, it's it's kind of funny. I get it. Yeah. Um, and you know how much I love smart asses. So right. F Trump or mm-hmm. go Joe or whatever it is. The messages are usually pretty short mm-hmm. and pretty generic. Yeah. Like, yay, my party. Mm-hmm. Boo the other party. Yeah. But this is this takes it to a whole new level. It does. It does. And can I also point <laughs> out just puts- that I do like that it drags Casey Anthony. Because <laughs> even though yeah. she was found innocent at her trial... I think we all know what really happened there. You know she had something to do with it. Right? Yeah. I mean, come on. I mean, here's the thing. OJ did it, and so did Casey Anthony. Yeah. Yeah. That's what every... I'm just saying... We're just reporting what everybody thinks. (laughs) Uh, If she comes out with a, if I would have done it book, like OJ did... If I did it, here's how I would have done it. And see, that's the thing. She totally will. So creepy. First of all, you've seen her new Peacock documentary, right? Or like you've heard of it at least? Uh Uh-uh. 
here's I, I don't want to watch it because I know that she was given a lot of money to do it, Oof. but I have watched commentary on it instead. And yeah, it's just it's so pathetic. Like every question is such a softball. And she's like, I, you know, I'm actually a really good person and please like me. Blah, blah, blah. And it's so stupid, dude. And like she just she lays the blame anywhere but her own feet. And this is this is the chick who's child went missing and then she went out clubbing later that night oh yeah and then and we think maybe the dad had something to do with it too is that no the dad's actually never been identified oh yeah no 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 not 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 the kid's dad her dad her dad yes her dad uh yeah i i'm not super sure on that she is claiming that he had stuff to do with it i don't think that there's enough evidence to prove that at all it is heartbreaking though especially in the death of a child when right. justice hasn't been served. Mm-hmm. It just right. bugs me. Right. And I will say one way that they could have made that sticker just a little more local is to add another one of America's most hated oh, women. No. So instead say Lori Vallow. Yeah. 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 And the nice thing is she's been convicted. Oh Lord. So we know what she did. Somebody get on that. Mm-hmm. Whether you're pro Biden or pro Trump. And why? Right. Why is this all we have left? Right. Why are... Typically, octogenarians are looked upon as members of society who need our help, Mm -hmm. whose mental health is failing a little bit, Mm -hmm. whose bodies are failing a little bit. Why are two octogenarians our only choice for president? (sighs) Honestly, it's so upsetting to me that we've split into parties so harshly that we won't vote for the other party, even when that person is just the better candidate. You know, like, I, I hate that we're so entrenched in our sides. Our choices know? are a guy who can't get through a complete sentence mm-hmm. or a guy who has too many sentences. The fact is that there are so many jobs that have a mandatory retirement age, and yet leader of the country isn't one of those? Thank you. Stupid. Dumb. Next up, Holt Arena is becoming the ICCU Arena? Yes. In the future, everything will be sponsored. Here's here's yeah. something, and I'm just going to pose the question because I don't know. I have no agenda. Uh, but have you noticed the people buying sponsorship rights to all the venues are all credit unions? Yes, I have noticed The that. Mountain America Center, the Frontier Center for mm-hmm. the Performing Arts, the ICCU Arena. Where are they getting all that money? I know that I'm a member of a credit union, and like, isn't it? It's not like Winco employee owned or anything, but it's mm-hmm. it's sort of a collective, right? Not yeah. A, but do, yeah, do do credit unions have more money than banks, or what's going on there? I don't know. I almost like when I, when I see a business spending, and I don't. I'm not the comptroller. Uh huh. Right. Right. <laughs> I just recently learned that term. I'm not the CFO. <laughs> but uh, when I see a business spending a lot of money, I think. They don't need my money. Right. They've yeah. got everybody else's apparently. Mhm. Is that a weird? Well, it makes you wonder how much of ever how much of everybody's money they're taking. I wouldn't necessarily hold it against them, but I would take note. And I don't know why it doesn't even really bug me. It's just an observation. There. Mm-hmm. I'm done. Okay, and somebody else, oh, Heather Metama. Thank you so much Heather for this. She's my Facebook friend and she someone okay was bitching Metima, about I don't even know Emma. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh her and her hubby Max, Max mm-hmm. cool dude. She mentioned on a a post cuz we were bitching about the concrete dividers on Hit. Right, and how frustrating those are. And on 17th. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because now you have to if you need to get to a place you have to do a U-turn, <sighs> which always makes me feel like I'm wasting gas. Right. I mean, it's, yeah. I know it's sixes. It's only a few feet, but. Right. But it just feels like such a, like, I hate to backtrack. Yeah. But she made a really good point. She said, I'll I'll read the whole thing verbatim. We started using the Pulse Point app last fall to see what was happening when emergency vehicles were driving near our home. Now we can't stop noticing that the many, many accidents that used to happen, especially at Hit and 17th, or on Hit between 17th and Sunnyside, are practically non-existent. Whoa, really? So I thought, okay, if it's for the greater good, I get it. 
Yeah, that's fair. So thanks for pointing that out, Heather. Now, mm-hmm. have you, do you have the Pulse Point app? I don't, but I totally should. Right. Like if you're ever curious about what's them sirens for? Right, right. Or, or what did I just pass? Yeah. Uh, get the Pulse Point app. Now, here's what I don't get. IFFD, the Idaho Falls Fire Department, is on it, mm-hmm. but the IFPD is not on it? That's weird. At least right now. I wonder why. As far as I'm aware. I don't know. But, you know, oftentimes they'll send a fire engine Mm -hmm. to like a medical emergency. Yes. Or, yeah. So you can kind of like pull up your Pulse Point app, see what that thing was at the corner of whatever, walk and don't walk, Mm -hmm. and sometimes get the information. Nice. It's, It's kind of a cool app. Yeah, that 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 does sound cool. It's not like a police scanner. It's just mm-hmm. sort of a, it's almost like Twitter, <laughs> you know, where they just post the newest thing first. Mm-hmm. You know, it just makes me think of that one time when I was driving home from the station and there was this random car parked right in the middle of the lane that like wasn't moving, didn't have hazards on, wasn't doing anything. Oh, wow. And like I got right up behind it and slowed way down. And like, I think I even stopped behind it for a second and it didn't do anything. And so I went around it. And I called it in because it was dark out and I was afraid someone was going to hit him. It was a hazard. Yeah. But I was also like, what is this guy doing? Is he having a medical emergency or something? And I I hate stuff like that where I don't know what happened in the end. Yeah. You know? Because here I was very invested in this at one uh-huh. point and now it's just a mystery forever. And the world will never know. Right. And we'll you can't like, know. like stuff like that, they wouldn't like put in the paper or anything. Right. So there's no way to know what happened. That's not newsworthy. Right. It's just a thing that happened. Yeah. I know the city of Idaho Falls is doing a big app push right now and I downloaded their app and I spent 30 seconds on it and then got distracted by a cat meme. Mm, um, sounds, sounds about right. Yeah. But I wonder if they could incorporate some sort of, not police scanner, but uh, a little blog saying. Yeah, like a Pulse Point S yeah. type thing in it. Here's the big loud sound you heard. Because right. you, you see people asking that question. Uh, you know, I live on the numbered streets. Did anybody hear a big boom? <laughs> right. Yeah, people totally do. I always, you know, wonder what that's about. Well, at least it was a big boom because if it was a big bang, then it was me and your mom. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Here's something I wanted to bring up on the very first snowfall of the season. And I didn't, dang it. But I'd like to bring it up now. Mm-hmm. Because who knows, with, with, with internet shows like... Who knows when you're going to be listening to this? It, you know, what keywords brought you here or whatever. But uh, somebody talked about how, hey, when you see teenagers spinning cookies in a parking lot, don't necessarily judge them because that's a great way to learn how to drive in the snow. It's true. And I do it every year. Inevitably, every year, I'll find myself driving home late at night, see an empty parking lot. It, you know, it has just snowed. Mm-hmm. I'll go into the parking lot, uh, whether it's a school or church or sometimes even a you know strip mall, and just mm-hmm. accelerate and then brake. Right. Do a little brake check all my own and sort of remind myself how my car operates in the snow. Like you were mm-hmm. we you were busting drifts and going Oh yeah, that's because I drive a soup. <laughs> yeah. And I was kinda in the passenger seat going, I was doing an impression of my mother <laughs> going, oh, <laughs> Mm-hmm. But I mean, you've driven my car in the snow and even you've been like, man, the handling on this thing is great. I think it performs better than my car. I think so too. But it's a good, it's a good thing to learn how to maybe, um, you know, spinning cookies in the mall parking lot mm-hmm. isn't the best idea. Right. But if it teaches you how to handle your car, mm-hmm. you know, steer in the direction of the skid or, you know, brake and then let off and then brake again or whatever you got to do. Yeah. Yeah, have a little snow practice in the parking lot. Exactly. Yeah. My car has a uh, dynamic traction control thing that I can Mm. actually take off. Oh, that's cool. And then it turns into supercar. (laughs) They can spin around and do things a normal car can't (laughs) if there's snow on the ground. Okay, that sounds really fun, though. It's great. (laughs) I've actually never spun any cookies. Haven't you? In my life. Although I did get accused of it once in a weird way. Okay. So um, I was in high school. I was leaving this um, event with this guy that I was into, and we parked in a parking lot. It, now, neither of us had had our first kiss, so we weren't doing anything too okay. bad. But, you know, we wanted to canoodle a little, little. Sure. And um, at one point, we both got out of the car for some reason, and I 
closed my door and I accidentally locked us out of the car. Oh. So we had to call his dad to like come get the car and like let us in, like unlock it for us. Oh. Yeah. And uh, his dad kind of took one look at us and was like, what were you guys doing in this parking lot anyway? Oh, uh, were you guys going to spin cookies? And like, thank goodness. Yep. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, dude. Let us like let your kid hang themselves on their own words sometimes you know like yeah. if you really want to know what they're doing don't build in an excuse but thank goodness he did because there was we were just so embarrassed already. you got us sir <laughs> yeah busted yeah yeah but he kind of just chuckled and like gave a little finger wag and unlocked the car thank goodness <laughs> but yeah it was not fun and we were in the cold for like 20 minutes and i felt like a fool <laughs> this whole thing sounds like an ad for on star <laughs> oh it was well yeah if you can get into the car to turn it on or bmw assist or what's the subaru one uh S super starlink okay yeah. yeah yeah but i do love that my subaru you can't lock the keys in it like it won't let you right i think that's such a great feature yeah yeah on our man flu and consumption episode we mentioned taylor tomlinson yes do you want some pink juice baby girl <laughs> I love her so much. She's great. And yeah, we watched the first episode of her show, After Midnight, mm -hmm. which I believe is on CBS, but um, it's you can only watch it on their app, but you can watch the first episode for free on YouTube if you want to check it out. Mm -hmm. And I thought it was eh, pretty good. I thought it was super cute. I really liked it. I feel like all of the little bits that they did were interesting to me mm -hmm. at least i didn't love that whitney cummings what uh, actually should i spoil it i'm gonna spoil it sure i don't love that whitney cummings was the one who got voted out because she was my favorite and i thought she was the funniest well yeah yeah she's the best yeah yeah she's second only well actually she's not even second to taylor they're like they're very they're very much on the same level to me to, to me whitney cummings is a level up from taylor tomlinson mm -hmm. but i can see why they they hired taylor tomlinson for the same reasons or reason that they hired jimmy fallon for the tonight show right you know mm -hmm. she's plain vanilla well, she's got that inviting sweet face. Oh, sure. Sure, sure, sure. <laughs> yeah. Whitney Cummings has got that sharp edge, though. Exactly. So, you know, will she ever host anything? I mean, I have to assume she eventually will. Sort of reminds uh, me of us. Yeah. You know, <laughs> there's plenty of plain vanilla shows to go lick if you want to. Yeah. This ain't it. <laughs> <laughs> we, I mean, we get a, a little spicy here and there. Uh, just a little. Yeah. 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 But um, one thing that was really funny about that specific episode is that uh, they did this segment called Is This Thing Still Cool? Mm -hmm. And they, I kid you not, showed a dress that I own. Yeah. It's in my closet right now. Maybe I'll even wear it for the next episode. The leopard print dress. Yes, I have this leopard print Kate Spade dress. Now you got to. Yeah, I think I do. Okay. It looks really good on me, too. So I was like, the whole time I was like, they better say it's you were, cool. You were biting your nails. <laughs> I was. I kind of was. I was like, man, they better say it's cool because I look so good in that dress. Yeah. So I was really relieved when they did reveal that, you know, animal print is indeed cool. And then we got, <laughs> uh, we got to meet Aparna Nanchurla. Yes. Who I, I never knew anything about, but you told me plays Susmita in Bob's Burgers. Yes. Just to clarify, we didn't actually meet her in person, but she was introduced on the show. Right, on the show. Yeah. And I guess she's written a book, but she is funny. In she's fact, really didn't she funny. win the thing or something? I, I think she did, as a matter of fact. It's just fake internet points. Like, right. I, I think the prize they were competing for was Taylor Tomlinson's dad's approval. Yes. <laughs> <There's something. laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, it's a lot like whose line is it anyway. Right. Mm -hmm. But I do like the format. There's a couple of UK shows that I'll catch clips of mm -hmm. um, with Jimmy Carr. Do you know who that is? I do. The uh, the guy that laughs like this. <laughs> yeah, I love his laugh. <laughs> it's so dumb. If, if sorry, Jimmy. <laughs> I, I, there's and and there's another comedian on there. I'm sorry, I don't remember his name, but it's sort of a panel show, kind of like after Taylor Tomlinson's After Midnight is, mm -hmm. where they've got you know one sort of host guy and then three wisecrackers. Yeah. But yeah, those panel shows with comedians, I think have a lot of potential. I'm glad to see us doing one of those stateside. Right. Same. Well, and you know, I really like, um, like for example, our dynamic, I feel like it's so hard for one person to carry it all by themselves. So having someone who's equally, who's on the same level as them, who's willing to kind of jump in and kind of pep things up is always nice. It, it just keeps the show going so much better and it's so much more fun. Yeah. I think I could do this, Without you, but I wouldn't want to. I no. think you could do this without me. 
And that's up to you. <laughs> I think it'd be a lot more boring if I did it alone. Because I think that I'd be a lot more like historical fact driven or something really nerdy and dumb that takes too much freaking research. If you had your own podcast, what would it be? What Ooh. would it be about? That's a good question. Um, I mean, I do happen to watch a lot of true crime. Yeah. And also true crime podcasts just do really well. So maybe that. Right. But uh, I think I'd rather do one that's like about culture and philosophy, maybe, you know, like kind of talk about what's going on the in the world. Stuff. and stuff. Well, yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, kind of, well, I mean, not even necessarily important, but maybe like, um, but that, but in a funny facetious way, like, why is Y2K coming back? Well, here's the, like, here's the kind of cultural sociological reasons behind it. And also, uh, I'm sorry, did you not realize that it's Eluc? You know, like something uh, you, dorky like that. <laughs> yeah. You know, I'll tell you why I think things are on a 25 year fashion cycle. Mm -hmm. Because kids see adults and other cool looking people, older brothers, maybe, mm -hmm. you know, wearing things and listening to things that they think are cool, but they have no choice to consume it. Like, right. They're always in the mm -hmm. backseat of the car and it's whatever mom puts on. <laughs> or or an older sibling puts on the radio. Right. And so when they come of age and are able to make purchasing decisions, they're like, I'm going to get me some of that. Right. That thing that I thought was so cool when I was a kid. Yeah. I want it now. Exactly. Yeah. Actually, that's a good point. I don't know if that's true. Mm -hmm. Check me on that. Uh, there's a... Uh, generational theory or something that I heard of. And yes, I slurred those first few words because I'm not... Strauss how? Oh, That's uh -huh. what I want to say. But they have an interesting theory that um, things come around again every 80 years. Right. Which would be about, what, three generations? Mm -hmm. But we kind of forget everything. <clears throat> Maybe every... four in this area because people tend to procreate a lot earlier. <laughs> yeah. It's not uncommon to see a 36-year-old grandma. Nope. But their point was, like, we mm -hmm. forget about... Like, it can be bad, too. We forget about wars. Mm -hmm. We forget about reasons for war. And, you know, I mean, I sometimes look at younger people and say, didn't you go to history class? Right. You know? Yeah. You you know what you're saying, right? Mm -hmm. You know it's been done, right? We've been here before, right? Mm -hmm. We got to learn from that stuff. Okay. It sort of baffles me that there are kids now who can legally drink who weren't around when the Twin Towers were hit. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't that wild? Crazy, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> Have you heard that Best Buy has removed all physical media from their shelves? They're no longer selling CDs, DVDs, Blu-ray, oh, and wow. I think even video games? Kind of like what you did. But I'm not sure. Yeah, I did that <laughs> 10 years ago. Yeah. I'm kind of bummed about the video games, though. Okay. Because I don't think that they're always as replayable as some of the other stuff. Like... You know, music and movies, you can do any old time. Like, it's nice to watch something that you've seen before. But video games, like, if you've already beaten every level and you've already found all the stuff, like, you either start the game over from the beginning, but then it's easier. Like, I like the idea that you can sell it and get some of your money back or, like, give it to someone after you're done. Do you remember Hastings? Oh, yeah. I loved Hastings. So, yeah. Right, everybody did. Yeah. Because that was like a big part. You could take all your stuff, you know, mm -hmm. do some spring cleaning, take them a box of stuff, get some store credit or some cash. Mm -hmm. Right. And get new stuff. Yeah. And that, yeah, that whole <clears throat> sub industry is just gone now. Yeah. Which is kind of sad because I loved being able to go in and physically rent a DVD. Yeah. You know? I... I'm so glad to be rid of stuff. You know, I'm a minimalist. You are. That's well, true. One of these days, we'll take a picture of my living room and you, you might be shocked. <laughs> There's like four things in there. It's like that. It's like the opposite of that one meme of the really messy room, but it's like a, a completely empty room and it's like, man, bitch, you live like this? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I yeah. just, I don't want a bunch of stuff like knickknacks right. just. Yeah. <laughs> Duh. <laughs> And I get it. I I'm do. sure I've illustrated that point. But I was getting sick of buying new things on new media every single time. Okay. Mm -hmm. And not me necessarily. Let's take somebody 10 years older than me. Right. They could have conceivably purchased an album on reel, on record, on eight track, on cassette, on CD, and on MP3. Mm-hmm. 
So that that's they bought the same album six freaking times. Right. And see, that part does bother me. You know, I hate that there's no like y- you can't transfer it. Yeah, if it if it just all falls under your account, but th- but then again, we're also moving away from the ownership model, right? Like Which now I it's just, also don't like because I don't want people to be able to take away things that I paid for, right? Yeah. Well, you're not necessarily owning them or paying for them. You're paying for the right to access them, yeah, whenever you want. And I, it took me forever. My friend Brad wanted me to get Apple Music the minute he did. It took me mm-hmm. two or three years after him mm-hmm. to go okay. And and honestly, the value in that is for me to go, hey, Siri, play blank. Right. <laughs> I will say, I also, I actually just recently got rid of all of my DVDs, too. Now, by got rid of, what I really did was give them to my parents, which is great because then I can go borrow them anytime. But, you know, I don't have a ton of space to just store stuff. And I don't have a, I don't have a DVD player. My video game, con- my only video game console is a Switch, you know, which doesn't play DVDs or anything. Mm-hmm. So... And plus, I have like all the streaming platforms, so I've got everything I need. Plus, my brother has a really robust Voodoo that I have access to. And he can he upload stuff to it? He can. Okay, mm-hmm. right. That's Yeah, that seems kind of... I've never right. used Voodoo, but that's kind of cool. Well, the cool thing is a lot of the newer DVDs will come with a code so that you can digitally store it too. <laughs> okay. So that you don't physically have to have the CD, which and I think is the way to do it. And you're not digitally storing it. They're just... There's a... There's a spreadsheet you have on their server, mm-hmm. and there's a tick box next to that movie that says, yep, they can access it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, um, I finally got rid of my DVDs, but I did keep a few things. Like, I kept um, all of my video games, obviously, and I kept my um, CDs, especially my uh, local CDs that aren't, like, big ones that you can right. get online. Right. You, lo- you love your local bands. I've got, like, I've got two... Two or three local band CDs that I I really do like. And then there's another one that I was so stupid and I didn't buy their CD and now I can't find it anywhere. And I have their songs stuck in my head all the damn time and I can't do anything about it. Do you remember the name of the band? I do. They actually used to be called the Love Capades and then they changed their names to their name to the Empire Kings. Okay, so this is a local band from Rexburg. Okay. Uh huh. Are they still doing their thing? I don't think so. I wonder if they're yeah. on uh, SoundCloud. I, I tried to look them up on the internet a couple of times and I haven't had any success. Well, that's what you get. Right. I know. For, for liking obscure stuff. I know. So anyway, if anyone has a Love Capades <laughs> CD that they would let me burn, that would be really cool of you. Love Capades. Yeah. But like my Red Yeti yeah. CD, that one's the one that's in my car right now. Red Yeti? Uh-huh. Are they still active? They are not. <laughs> Yeah, I, mean, <laughs> I know. Oh, you know what? That speaking of podcast ideas, that was one idea that I had. Uh-huh. Uh huh. The ones who, uh, the ones who didn't make it, where I go and I find like obscure, weird stuff like that, whether they're bands or like I don't know, failed actors or something, and I do little like podcasts about them. I think that'd be a really neat one. I'm gonna stop giving you a hard time because, and can we segue a little bit? Right. Because. You have made me hip to things way before I would have, because you do sort of dwell in obscure land Mm -hmm. a little bit. Example, has been hotel. Right. Holy cow. Yeah. I'm really excited that it's finally out. I have been following it for, geez, like four or five years now. I believe you told me that the the creator, Vivian Moreno. Uh Uh-huh. Wow. Madrano. Madrano. Mm-hmm. Okay. So she like took her viewers through the process of starting, j- kickstarting a cartoon, basically. Yeah. Now, look, if you're um, easily offended or a child, do not watch it. Yeah. It's not, uh, it, it's an, it's adult animation, not, yeah. not like in a porny way, but in a, in a vulgar way. I don't know. It's, there, it alludes to things. One of the characters, Angel Dust, is a gay porn star. That's true. Yeah, and yeah. that song "Poison," it's good. I know it is. Th- and that's I need the to thing. show you another song with okay. that too. We'll get to that later. The reason it's so good is okay. Deal. Okay. The reason it's so good is it's just this hyper stylized style of animation, right? The, the likes of which I've never seen. Yeah. You know, well, after a while, all the Disney Pixar stuff, DreamWorks stuff, kind of looks the same. Mm-hmm. This is like eye candy mm-hmm. to the nth degree. I think so too. Well, and especially where all other adult animation looks like Bob's Burgers. 
Yeah. You know, where no one has a chin and all of their eyes are just perfectly round. Why does everybody <laughs> on Bob's Burgers look so dumpy? <laughs> well, to be fair, I think it's because most human beings look kind of dumpy. La- yeah, the lack of chins on everybody just, they look they frumpy and dumpy. <laughs> but you know what? I kind of like that because then it's sort of like the opposite of regular media where everyone's beautiful and you just can't, you can't. That's true. Yeah, you can't equal any of their aesthetic. But then there's Bob and Linda, and they're just so normal and just a little dumpy. You I know? just wonder how they um, put their pillowcases on. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Without chins. <laughs> they probably have to help each other. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a two, a two person, person job. job. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, Jinx, hey. owe me a jelly belly orange sherbet. Okay, good. Sherbet. <laughs> oh, maybe. Do I say sherbet? <laughs> and this is free on Prime, by the way. Uh huh. So, kids, don't go there. <laughs> without well, your parents' permission. I guess permission. it's not free on Prime. You have to have a Prime subscription. Right. But I, I thought that's what Prime meant. Well, yeah. It's but. free with Prime? Yeah, there you go. Okay. So it's has been hotel is basically a halfway house because so what's happening is heaven is killing off a bunch of demons every season. And so in order for the demons to avoid, you know, basically genocide. At the hands of uh, the Almighty mm-hmm. and and his, can you say legion when you're referring to angels? Legion sounds yeah. more like demons, but no, anyway. You, you, there are legions of, of angels too. Okay. Leagues. How about leagues of angels? There you go. And legions of devils. I don't yeah. know why legion has an evil connotation to me. Maybe that yeah. one movie or that, yeah, where that guy says, I am legion. Yes. We, yeah, we are. We many. are legion. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So. Um, <laughs> has been hotel is a rehab for demons that want to get better and leave hell be redeemed for to go to heaven. Be, so it's a story of redemption. Yeah. Um, but it's a terrible, terrible show that kids shouldn't watch. <laughs> no, please don't. I think, well, and I, to and be honestly, fair, even just sensitive folk in general, it's got a lot of things that, I mean, it deals with a lot of really heavy topics and it could be sort of traumatizing if you're not in the headspace to watch it. If you don't know my sense of humor after six months, then I don't know what. I haven't done my job. But even I was shocked at a couple of things. I was like, and not just necessarily shocked, but just, well, that's unnecessary. Right, right. Channeling my mom or my grandma or something. Yeah, yeah. Like, as far as, like, brutality, it's. I think it's on the same level as The Boys. Yeah. You know? Or at least right in there. I mean, it's... The gore isn't doesn't hit home as much because it doesn't look realistic. But you know, there's all kinds of stuff like that. Yeah, there's some there's some shocking moments. But just the stuff. If you're a fan of animation, which watch I am, it. yeah, I love it's animation. Incredible. I think it is such an interesting medium that is so underutilized. You know. By the way, has been is one word: H A Z B I N. Mm-hmm. Well, and speaking of animation, have you ever heard of Bluey? Heard of? Yes, seen. No. Well, because why would you? You don't have kids. Yeah, my kids know? grown and... Yeah. Now, I haven't either. But for some reason, Facebook is absolutely convinced that I'm an adult Bluey fan and I know all of the memes <laughs> and I want desperately to join a page because like every fifth post is something Bluey. Really? Yes. I don't know if it's because my demographic tends to be people with kids around the age that uh-huh. would be watching Bluey Clock's in this ticking. area. Happy birthday. Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, but the most I've ever seen was when I was working in clinical research. We'd have t- we had TVs in the rooms to keep people occupied because okay. you have to be there for a long time. And like sometimes the kids would put on Bluey and I'd see like a scene or two max. I do love it when I visit like, I don't know, friends at Thanksgiving that have younger kids Mm -hmm. because they've always got like stuff I've never heard of before on. Right. Like, uh, okay. Um, And this was a few years, a few years ago. Mm -hmm. Um, The Mickey Mouse Club was on, Mm -hmm. but it was the new animated one. Yeah. With the theme song, hot dog, hot dog, hot diggity dog. Yes. And the kid's eyes just got so big and started (laughs) swaying and singing to it. (laughs) And I was like, this song is amazing. (laughs) Right. And so I rewound it, which they loved, (laughs) and and played it again. I'm like, okay, that come to find out it's They Might Be Giants. One of my favorite bands of all time. They also do the Malcolm in the Middle theme. Yes. One of my favorite songs, The Sun is a Mass of Incandescent Gas. Mm -hmm. They do that. Uh, the the uh, 1990 album Flood is amazing. Right. But there's never a reason for me to put that stuff on. Yeah. 
Should we watch some Bluey? I kind of think we should. I will say one time <laughs> when I caught one scene, I noticed that the mom, so the mom dog had just gotten back from a run and she had an iPod strapped to her arm. And the little display on it was the Pink Floyd album, but it was a bone instead of a prism. Oh, wow. Which that was when I was like, oh, that's kind of funny. Uh-huh. This, this a reference like, just for parents. Right, right. And that's the thing. I love kids shows that make, that are made for parents to enjoy watching instead of being annoyed by like i i've never watched caillou outside of maybe like a handful of Uh, times when i was a kid kill me now but every every adult Uh who has ever seen caillou wants to kill that little bald shithead (laughs) (laughs) the the family guy send off a send up of caillou is amazing right right the uh the castrato canadian (laughs) father they just they need to yeah yeah that that kid just bugs and why is he bald? Right. Right. <laughs> yeah. I wonder if he had like baby cancer or something. <laughs> oh, and, no, come on. Hey, here's the thing. He's in remission, so it's fine. <laughs> but he had baby cancer, lost all his hair. And that's why he's such a little shit because his parents let him get away with everything. Right. Because he's, yeah, because yeah. he could always play the, hey, I'm going to die soon card. Right. Right. Yeah. Or even the, well, aren't you glad I didn't die? Yeah. 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 They're just so grateful yeah. he's alive that they just let him wreak havoc and be a little turd aren't you grateful to have one more day with me right yeah <laughs> yeah i think that's the only reason that caillou is still alive because just... yeah no, thank you um he is a cancer <clears throat> yes i yes, mean let's is. take it all the way down the road <laughs> the nice thing is While we're, we're not, riffing <laughs> we are not talking about a real kid no. so it's okay <laughs> no we're not <laughs> yeah we're talking about the shitty writers behind the show <laughs> right shockingly they took this animated show and they turned it into a stage play that's oh. like now touring, and it just came to the Frontier Center last week. Yeah. I wonder what that's like. I wonder what that looks like. Right. I saw some stills. It looks like they're mainly like big puppets. And how weird would it be if like we went as just two adults with no kids? I know. <laughs> I well, you have thought a, about it. You have a niece and nephew we could take. That's true. That's true. Would they be into that? Are they oh, too old? As a matter of fact, my brother took them. Okay. Yeah. Huh. Did they like it? Oh, They loved it. Okay. Dude, every kid loves Bluey. Every kid I've ever talked to about Bluey is like, oh, I love Bluey. It's so fun. Let's watch it. I think I I know it's your birthday. Can we just have it on? (laughs) You know what? (laughs) Yeah. A little after dinner. uh... It sounds fun. (laughs) It sounds cute. And you know, okay, like, I really love We're going to go to a Spud (laughs) Kings hockey game. Yeah. (laughs) Let's live a well balanced life and watch some Bluey. (laughs) I think so. Well, like, one of my favorite series recently was Centaur World. Which was probably oh, made yeah. for like 12 to 13 year olds somewhere uh, there. But like, it's all these dumb, goofy songs. It's a weird story. It's got a neat plot, you know. Um, but I just liked how dumb and goofy it was. I can definitely see people in our age category going, that don't have mm-hmm. kids going, that's dumb. I'm not watching that. Right. But you know what? That's how you turn into a crotchety old person. It is. It so is. So I'm going to, you know, the, those kids, they keep you young. Right. Those, those kids and their Pac Man video games and their. Mm-hmm. Depeche Mode records. <laughs> well, yeah. And you know what? That's the thing. Like, my life is stressful. You know, I've got a lot of, I, I've got a lot of stuff going on. I have a pretty, I have a couple of pretty demanding careers, you know? I think you're right. I, I would agree with your escapism theory. Yeah. I think it's genuinely just that people want something that feels somewhat comforting, you know, that isn't too harsh, but is still interesting to watch. And I mean, like, here's the thing. I love the boys. But it's kind of hard to walk away from that feeling okay, you know? Right. Yeah. It challenges you. (laughs) It does. It does. And again, it's sort of that balance. I have a friend who graduated high school the same year as as, uh, I did. And he's got, I don't want to say shock white hair, but it's it's all gray, if not white. Mm -hmm. In fact, I would say he sort of looks like the very definition because he's got the two-car garage going on. Oh, yeah. Like I do. Uh Uh-huh. Um, he's the very definition of what you would picture if you picture a Mormon patriarch. Oh, yeah. And he is LDS. Uh Uh-huh. That might have something to do with it. I don't know. But uh, we met up and uh, he's like, "What? how do you look so young? And first of all, I said, I don't. (laughs) And then squinted at him because, yeah, I got those crow's feet. But I wonder if if there is something to that. You know, Mm -hmm. if you listen to too much talk radio... Right. In, instead of pop music like you used to. They say that men stop consuming new music around the age of 38. Wow. 
And I still listen to my buddy Brad station now, 105.1, because mm-hmm. they don't play that many commercials and they play the new stuff. Right. It's like only new music. Mm-hmm. And in fact, is that their positioning mm-hmm. statement? But mm-hmm. I don't know if there's just something that kind of keeps you young when you consume, I don't know, bubble gum. Yeah. Youthful items. Emotional, mental bubble gum. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. so I think I would almost say, I'm no therapist, but I would say this seems like a healthy way to escape. And also, I've noticed a lot more adults that just play video games, and they're not always like the Call of Duty or like Halo type video games that are really um, intense. There are lots of people who like Minecraft and stuff now, and they just play that uh, pretty chronically. Yeah, I did have an older friend say that his doctor recommended mm-hmm. that he play find something and play it. You know, League of Legends or some like right. a strategy game kind of thing, mm-hmm. you know, just to keep his mind sharp. Like I said, the only gaming console I have in my house is a Nintendo Switch. And actually, that's not true. I also have my old Nintendo 64. You have an N64. Which I love so much. Do you have GoldenEye? I do. Okay. Yeah. So if you want to come over and play, you can come on over and play. I just might. Yeah. 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 You know what? You can play my 64 while I play my Switch. Perfect. My, my Switch. And that'll be a nice little birthday for and, me. And we'll put Bluey on in the background. I love it. That's perfect. <laughs> now, really quick though, your friend at Rigged Games did something oh, interesting spe- with video games, right? Speaking of video games. Yes. Let's give a big old shout out to John Riggs, Rigged without the E games. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Check this out. Here's here's a little screen capture, and we'll zoom in. He says, in my next video game, Lemuel de Stacker, one of the portraits on the wall is the temple. How funny is that? From Idaho Falls. Yeah. I love that little homage. Like we've talked about. Yeah, we have his uh, his air freshener that you can get at Rig Games. Here it is right here. It's super cute. (laughs) Looks like a coin coin slot on a classic 80s arcade machine. Mm -hmm. And... uh, Oh, still's got the still got the smell. Right. Menthol cigarettes, wood paneling. Mm-hmm. And there's one other thing in there. Anyway. <laughs> soda. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Spilled mm-hmm. soda. Yeah. You can get them at riggedgames.com. This game isn't coming out till later this year, but isn't that funny? I think that's super funny. He plays a little pays a little 16-bit homage mm-hmm. to the Idaho Falls Temple. Well, and also, how so I've actually noticed in media quite a bit. That all of a sudden, Idaho Falls is kind of like an up-and-comer. Well, with the Hallmark Channel movie right. checking it twice. Uh-huh. And yeah. yeah, maybe, uh, you know, Jimmy Kimmel buying uh, South Fork Lodge in Swan Valley. Mm-hmm. Right. We're finally on the map, baby. Well, and that reminds me of that uh, comment that you got on your new Facebook banner uh, that said something like, man, checking it twice should have used this shot in their movie. Yes, because so they didn't true. use any exterior shots of Idaho Falls. No, which is so dumb because it's so easy now. It's all a lie. Yeah. You Every could've... single Hallmark movie <laughs> well, channel Christmas movie is a lie. Of course they are. Come on. They end with like a man changing half the time. So Spe- Speaking of formulaic. Whatever. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> or the woman. Yeah, that's true. One That's person true. from the big city mm-hmm. goes back to their hometown and <laughs> discovers love and the right. true meaning of Christmas. It's nice to see Idaho Falls kind of popping up on the map more. Is this a, just a manifestation? Because we talked in a few, a few episodes ago about mm-hmm. the city of Idaho Falls saying, you know what? We're not going to just be a um, a gateway anymore. We're mm-hmm. going to be a destination unto ourselves. Mm-hmm. I think it is. And I think that's fantastic. Well, and I think that we're achieving it. We've got a lot to do around here. You know, that was not always true. When we were young, there was nothing to do, you know. And now some we're... might say that there still isn't, but with this, well, yeah. you, with the Mountain America Center, mm-hmm. the Mac, right? You know, there's there's more stuff coming. There's more entertainment options. There's not a lot to do for free. It you, yeah, but it used to be not too long ago that Pocatello went to Idaho Falls for the food, and Idaho Falls mm-hmm. went to Pocatello for the entertainment. Right. Yeah. So I wonder what's going to become of Pocatello now. They'll always be fine because of mm-hmm. ISU. Right. Before we go, quick PSA, the City of Idaho Falls Utility Department won't call you and badger you for money. Never. I guess there's a scam going around. There's always some scam with that kind of stuff. Multiple calls being made to utility customers claiming to be their power provider, threatening to disconnect service unless payment for past due balances on their utility account are received. Mm -hmm. I hate to hear about these scams because... I'm very scam aware. Mm -hmm. I haven't fallen for one yet. Once, like seven years ago, I did click an email link, a phishing link at work. 
And I was like, uh, I think that's the only thing I've ever done. Right. But I know, okay. With I the, don't open any any of my emails, so I'm safe. <laughs> <laughs> with the INL data breach, I mm-hmm. do know one woman who got scammed. Oh, no. They got some data and then got her to transfer some money. So oh, I, that that's who I feel bad for are the grandmas. Right. Yeah. The people who don't know about what they're doing to try to steal your money from you. Right. You know, we're, we're talking about how if you don't watch Bluey now, you're going to be old and out of touch in 20 years, Mm -hmm. you know, but uh, you know, we all, we grew up with email Mm -hmm. and know how to use it and know what to look for and know what looks wrong. Right. Like one thing I'm seeing a lot on Facebook groups now, either the admins aren't paying attention or something, but we're going to bless five families with hundred dollar Texas roadhouse gift cards or just something ridiculous. Sometimes yeah. they don't even say what they're blessing you with. Right. Right. And we kind of covered this in a previous episode when we talked about some of these accounts are just trying to get engagement and interaction mm-hmm. and likes right. so that they can then sell their account to an actual scammer. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's hard to know what a scam, like, especially if you're, you know, 80, it's hard to know what a scam is. Yeah. If like. you're media illiterate. I know a family member fell, didn't fall for, got a scam called the, hey, grandpa, I'm in jail and you need to wire that money. You've heard of that one, right? I have. I have. Where they pretend to be the grandkid calling Mm -hmm. and they need money immediately. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if these scammers are like, you have to Venmo us or PayPal us or go down and get some iTunes gift cards right now. (laughs) I don't know how it's going, but- Yeah, the power. Oh, and did you know the IRS will never call you either? I did. It'll either be mail or, here's a scary thought, in person. Ooh, (laughs) yikes. (laughs) The men in black at your door. Mm -hmm. Right. So, I mean, especially when somebody calls you intently and intensely wanting you to give them money right now. Right. Now, and if that ever does happen to you and you're not sure, one thing that I would recommend is get off the phone call. Go on the internet, find the number for the institution, call it and ask them. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You don't have to. And that's the other thing is 80 year olds, I think, are still from the generation where you have to be polite to people on the phone. Right. I know. I just Uh, hang up now. I don't even care. Yeah. You know, when you get into real estate, as as you know, you start to get a lot of calls. Mm -hmm. There's a whole secondary industry to real estate. And I didn't realize this when I got into it, but I found out pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. All these people that also want your money, mm-hmm. whether it's, um, I don't know, we'll send you leads or this is great health insurance because we know you're self-employed or whatever it is. Right. The minute I hear it's a scam call, I don't even say not interested. I just hang up. Yeah. yeah. And sometimes then block the number. You don't have to be polite to people on the phone. Let me rephrase. You don't have to be polite to people you don't know. Right. On the phone. No. Yeah. I mean, technically you don't have to be polite to anyone, but- then you probably won't have any friends. So that's a bummer for you. <laughs> and here's here's a call back to a previous episode as well. I have started being more polite to my Alexa. I love that. Good. <laughs> Maybe she won't slaughter you during the robot uprising now. Maybe. Yeah. I tried it once. When I say I've started, I tried it once. I did a please and thank you. And it was actually quite nice because yeah. when I said thank you, I think she said my pleasure or you're welcome or something that's like that. That's nice. See, that's the thing. I hated that I couldn't say thank you to my robot servant without her trying to like do something else for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know if it's added a little more copacetic-ness into my life or a little what. Little decorum. Yeah. Yeah. But, I mean, I, I just treat my robot servant, instead of typing it into Google, mm-hmm. I say it into Alexa. Do you know what I mean? Right. I don't. Oh, yeah. I never saw the point, but somebody, Brad, said, mm-hmm. you know, I'm polite to my robot servant just because I want more politeness in my life. Mm-hmm. I and think I that's thought, nice. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I usually reserve that for humans. We'll see. We'll yeah. see if I continue to do that. I'm yeah. I'm no saint. I mean, every time I bump into a chair, I say sorry. You do? <laughs> oh, come on. Everyone does that. Everyone does that? Yeah. At least I've seen memes about it. Like you bump into a chair or a table and you're like, oh, sorry. Oh, never mind. You know? I usually just say, ow. <laughs> oh, well. And then I hit the chair. Oh, yeah, no. Because it's the chair's fault for getting in my way. <laughs> <laughs> sure, sure. <laughs> Yeah, now I see why you're not polite to your Alexa. (laughs) It's not. (laughs) I thought we've had this discussion about anthropomorphizing things. 
<laughs> I mean, it's mostly just that, like, it's such a gut reaction. Like, when I was a kid, I would always say sorry about everything. Uh, to the point where, at one point, my family did, um, like, quotes or something like that. And yours was, sorry? Yeah, mine was sorry. Carly's quote Yeah, was either sorry. that or I'm okay. Because I was really clumsy as a kid. So, every time I'd bump into a chair, I'd say sorry. Uh, and then if I tripped over a chair, I'd be like, I'm okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Cute. Yeah. <laughs> Want to leave you with this? I saw this. I'm on. A, I'm on a Idaho history page, 1800s oh, cool. to present. Which, yeah, I can't imagine. There's not much history before that, unless we're talking ancient history and the Clovis people. Right. But uh, did you know? And I should have been wearing my North Highway Cafe shirt for this. Oh yeah, that would have been good. Did you know that this is the 90th anniversary of the North Highway Cafe? Really? It's been in continuous operation. Since June 17th, 1934, according to researchers. Holy crap. Yeah. That's a lot. So Was it's it a, always called the North Highway Cafe? It was. And we're going to show you the photo here in a second. I guess it was known as a Fiverr shop. Oh. The shop was owned by Aaron Jones. Mm -hmm. He'd set up tables in his garage wow. so customers could have a bite to eat while waiting for their Model A's to be Whoa. fixed. Whoa. Isn't that crazy? That's crazy. Yeah. Here's a photo of uh, the North Highway Cafe, I believe, back in the 30s. Mm -hmm. And then here's a, we'll leave you with this. Just a silly little video I did. Because it's such a landmark, one of the things I did when I first got into real estate was, I'm going to go around to different Idaho Falls landmarks uh -huh. and just um, pose next to them and make little stupid ads, TikToks before, I think this I is, it. yeah, before TikTok really hit the peak. Right. But um, yeah, here's a silly little video. Anyway, thanks so much for tuning in. Give us a like or subscribe. If you really like our show, tell a friend. Mm -hmm. Appreciate you. Man, imagine all those years of seasoning on that grill. Yeah. Like that flavor <laughs> is packed in there. And they do catering too. You should know mm -hmm. that. Yeah. yeah. Some people really love that. Every time I've gone, I've enjoyed it. You know what? We should go there for brunch one time. It'd be fun. As long as we can watch Bluey. Let's do it. On our phones. While like we're iPad doing babies. It. Yeah. <laughs>